Today we'll be discussing what made me decide to make the DJI FPV my very first drone. Not my very first FPV drone, but my very first drone. Now, I don't know if it's the right decision. If I follow the advice of all the people that wanted to give advice, they would say that that's the wrong decision. But I spent a lot of time researching drones and I broke down all the pros and cons. This one seemed like the most logical choice to me. Let's start out with, there is a gimbal on it. With most FPP drones, you just got the camera mounted. It's not gonna be swiveling. You basically put it where you want it and lock it down. This one can actually travel up and down. It cannot move side to side. It can only go up and down, but this is the only FPV drone that I'm aware of that actually has a gimbal on it. Now, arguably, that's a bad thing because you know with FPV drones, you're going to be crashing it. A gimbal is just going to be another point of failure. You can buy replacements for it, so you can just buy that accessory and replace it yourself. But because this has that gimbal, you can get shots with this that you can't get with other FPV drones. Now, the first drones I was looking at was the Mavic and the Mini. Because I'm more interested in the cinematography aspect of droning, I'm not really as interested in trying to go through obstacles or anything like that. I want to get nice, quick shots. Specifically, I want to get something where somebody's driving a car and I'm following the car. That's what I'm really looking for in a drone. Now, with the Mini, you got a lot of advantages with that because it's 249 grams. You can actually fly that in places where you cannot fly a Mavic without a Part 107. The only problem with the Mini is that if you try to use auto track, the maximum speed you're going to get is about 20 miles per hour. And it's probably going to be less than that, which means that you're still going to be able to see the tires spinning while you're auto tracking a vehicle. So that kind of threw that one out for me. The next one was the Mavic. Now the Mavic can go faster. It can go about 37 miles per hour while it's auto tracking, but 37 really still isn't that fast. It's got a really nice camera on it, but you're gonna have to drive that thing manually to get the full 47 miles per hour. So obviously that made me go to the FPVs. So custom FPVs, they can go real fast, but they don't have a lot of the safety features that this one has. So for example, we got the obstacle avoidance. This actually has a light under it, so you can put some light on the ground. But more importantly than that, this has returned to home and break. Now you can get custom drones now that have returned to home. You gotta go through a lot of hoops. You gotta buy some extra hardware. You can make that happen, but this one, it just has a built in. Like that's probably the main thing about this one that made me attracted to it is the fact that everything is already done. The biggest concern you're gonna hear from custom FPV flyers, especially if they're trying to fly over a long distance, is that when it breaks a connection to the goggles and it goes black, you're gonna have to go find that drone. If you can't, then you're down whatever that drone costs. Because this has returned to home, you're gonna have a FPV drone that can fly almost 90 miles an hour out of the box that also has the capacity to lift off and come back to you if you ever lose connection. That is a big deal to me. More importantly, it has that break. So if you're flying along at 90 miles an hour, you can hit one button, it'll fly back and it will stop right there. That's something you're never gonna get out of a custom FPV drone. And I haven't hung out with a lot of drone pilots, but I have hung out with a lot of RC pilots. And if you talk to those pilots, especially the ones that go to meetups, you're going to have heard of some kind of a tragedy that happened because the pilot was new and instead of sacrificing the plane, they actually made a decision that got somebody hurt. So having that brake system that can stop this thing on a dime, that is huge. So really for me, it became a decision between this one and the other. Avada. This one's faster and it has that gimbal. The Avada is more durable. That's basically all that it has going for it. They're both really loud and annoying. They both cost more than a custom FPV drone. But that brings me to another thing that made me decide to get this one over a custom FPV drone, which is that this is the most cookie cutter style of drone that you can get. And by that, what I mean is if I put together a drone and I get custom motors and a custom body and I tune everything myself, I'm not really going to know what it's actually supposed to act like aside from what I can get out of like a simulator or something like that. With this, this is going to kind of teach me what a drone should feel like. And then as I get more into the custom FPV drones and I start learning about things like motor sizes and propeller sizes and what those actually do and how it feels, I'm at least going to have my bearings in a place that is a solid point. Things like prop wash, like what should that feel like? All of that stuff matters and I want to know what it should feel like before I start really playing around with the fancy stuff. So this is another thing. Now they've got the Goggles V2, which are these, and then they got the Goggles 2 that are coming out now, but still most of the people that I see that are like pro pilots, they still use these goggles. So that means when you go get the Tango 2, which is actually another thing they got because I wanted to play on something on simulator that wasn't just a controller, I'm already going to have the controller I need and I'm going to have the goggles I need in order to get a custom drone and get going. So basically this kit gave me a head start on FPV droning. Now these goggles are 810p, they have a 28 millisecond response time, and they have a 120 hertz refresh rate. So compared to the Goggles 2, the Goggles 2 have a slightly higher resolution but it's only 100 hertz and a 30 millisecond response time so these are actually faster which might be the reason that the pros are still using this now maybe one day i'll go to the goggles too but for right now this is definitely going to work with all the drones i'm going to be playing with now this is another thing that this comes with that the Avata does not. So maybe one day I decide I do want to get the Avata. This I'm going to have to buy separately. So because I got this kit, I've already got this controller. Either way, I'm already going to a place where I can do lots of different FPV. Now this controller is only for DJI products. So you're not going to be able to use this with a custom FPV drone, but for the DJI FPV and the Avata, this controller will work for both of those.
So that's a pretty nice throw. Now the cool thing about this is that this controller will also work in simulators. So if you want to practice in liftoff, you can do that. But also DJI has their own simulator that you can use too. Since I got liftoff, I mean, that's kind of the one to go to. But yeah, I mean, a very nice feeling remote. That's for sure. I think the springiness might be a little bit much so I can adjust that. So that screw there and that screw there, you can actually use that to adjust the spring. So very nice feature that they got in this remote. So the batteries are kind of interesting because one of the things that made me a little bit scared of regular FPV drones, the custom FPV drones, is that the batteries are lithium polymer. So I was like, okay, this is probably a lithium ion, so that's going to be a lot safer. Well, it's not. This is actually a lithium polymer as well. Now, the problem with lithium polymer is that you have to really take care of these batteries because if you don't, they can catch fire. The difference between this battery and most lithium polymer batteries is that this battery actually has its own controller built in. So what that means is that if you charge this thing all the way up and then you don't use it, it will actually automatically bring that back down to 50% so that it won't be volatile. So so this battery is way more safe than a custom FPV drone battery. And for something I'm going to have in my house, that's actually pretty important. This one as well as the Ivata also has a couple of neat features. So this has got turtle mode, which means that essentially if this thing flips upside down, if you're going to be flying this the way that I'm going to be flying it, where you fly it farther away than you probably should, you can program a button on the controller so it will spin up two of the propellers and it will actually right itself. It'll flip itself over. Something like that still isn't going to save you in all scenarios, but it will give you more of a chance with this drone than you're going to get with a custom FPV drone. On top of that, because this thing can just hover, so more like a Mavic or a Mini, with a custom FPV drone, you are always making little corrections. The idea of just staying in one spot and hovering there, it's, uh, it's kind of like asking too much. With this thing you can do that. You can have it fly in a straight line. You can put it in normal or sport mode which is going to be 30 or 60 miles per hour which is still faster than the Mavic and you can have this thing just fly in a straight line so you can get kind of those cinematic shots without all the waviness that you're going to get by trying to fly manually. But you're still going to have manual mode which means that you can fly this thing like a full-on FPV drone. So you're not going to have the best of both worlds but you're going to have a mix of both worlds. It's still going to be heavier than a regular FPV drone so it's going to feel a little bit more massive which is actually going to be a little bit more forgiving because it's not going to be whipping around quite so fast but you're still going to be able to go almost 90 miles an hour with it and with some aftermarket propellers you can even go 100 so this in my opinion this is the perfect drone for me now i'm buying this knowing eventually i'm going to retire it so i expect at some point i'm going to crash this thing in a way that is not going to be repairable and when that happens i'm going to have this I'm going to have that, and I'm going to move on from there. See if I forgot anything. Cruise control, I think I talked about that. Oh, it's got firmware. So, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things. Firmware is the thing that it's, you know, it's the, the software for the hardware. When you've got a company where their job is to develop this firmware, I kind of feel like that firmware is going to be better than what you're going to get out of an open source community. Now, open source communities, it's, it's, it's arguable, because they can make some really great stuff. But they're not going to be as worried about updating the firmware on a battery as DJI is. Okay, and then the other thing is legality. So this is one of the things where I think this is going to help me out because one of the things that you hear about with a custom FPV drone and the difference between that and this is that this one has things like limited height that you can go to. Now, when people first hear that, the reaction is usually, well, that's annoying. What if I want to go higher than that? Well, here's the thing. You don't. If you're driving a car and you get a speeding ticket, you're going to have to pay a fine. But you're not playing with the highway patrol with this. You're playing with the FAA. Whatever fine you would have to pay with your car, you're going to have to add a zero, sometimes two zeros to that fine. Now, because this is my first drone, because I'm learning with this drone, this is going to help me to make sure that I get an understanding of how high it can actually fly what that looks like before I get into a custom FPV drone where I could theoretically break those rules. I don't want to break those rules. I want to learn what those limits are. I'll learn about the no fly zones. I want to have a drone that's going to protect me and keep me from doing something dumb. Things like flying over people, flying over cars, flying at night, all those things. There's plenty of rules for that. This is going to help me to learn those things. So when I go into an area where it's less certain, I'm already going to know what I can and can't do. Now, if you want to see footage, you can go see some of the other you know, hundreds of videos that there are on YouTube. That's probably not why you're watching this video. This was just an overview of why I decided to buy this as my first drone. As of right now, I think that's a smart decision. I might change my mind in the future. But basically, this is my beginning spot from here. Uh, who knows?